Hey everybody, I'm Scott Weichel. You're listening to My Kind of Country. Thanks for joining me on a Monday night. Nice to have you with us all over the world. My guest tonight is an award-winning vocalist and entertainer. She's opened up for the Bellamy Brothers, Jimmy Fortune, Sawyer Brown, and many others. And she's won awards for vocalist and entertainer for her home state of New Hampshire and the North American Country Music Association two years in a row. She's performed in Silver Dollar City, Branson, Missouri, the Country Tonight Theater, Pigeon Forge, and she is a fabulous uh, singer and entertainer, and it's a pleasure to have her on the show tonight. This is Rebecca May Lawless. Rebecca, how are you tonight? I'm great, Scott. Thank you so much for having me on today. That's super kind of you. Well, it is an honor. I'm very happy to uh, finally be able to talk to you and uh, hear about your career in music. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, give me a little bit of your background and tell me how you got into the wonderful world of music. Okay, I'll try to keep it short. Um, I uh, started um, in the music world um, probably when I was, well, I was about when I was 19, almost 20. Um, I wasn't really exposed to music throughout most of my childhood. Um, I have a book coming out that will address all of that. I have a on my life story coming out sometime in the, probably in the next, um, it's probably going to be out by around Christmas time, I would say. Um, so I'm excited about that to share, you know, some of my um, past, my growing up. It, it was a weird growing up, didn't have a whole lot of music. Um, a friend of the family heard me goofing around with my mom when I was 19 at a Bible study, and she pulled my mom aside and said that uh, if my mom could find a, a vocal instructor, she would pay for the voice lessons. So that's kind of how I started figuring out that I might have a okay voice, and so I went and did some lessons, and um, the man that I took them from was an, um, a great opera singer himself, and he wanted me to be an opera singer, but I was like, yeah, no. But, um, <laughs> um, that is on my bucket list at some point, though. I would like to just say that I've done one opera, which would be cool. But um, didn't really do a whole lot of anything with the voice lesson experience until I started competing for um, my home state of New Hampshire for karaoke contests and things like that. And, and that's kind of when the bug started to happen. And that was in my 30s, and I'm not going to say how old I am now, but um, I won some titles for the state of New Hampshire, and then I went on to compete for um, the state of New Hampshire, representing New Hampshire um, in Pigeon Forge for North America, and won some titles there. And, um, and jumping forward to about 2010, was invited to uh, Nashville to record a duet with a friend of mine from Massachusetts who was drumming for me um, one night in New Hampshire. And so uh, that was in 2010. And uh, that's when the bug really hit me that mm, I think I want to do something here. So I, I packed up in 2011 and moved down here, didn't have a job, didn't have a place to stay, and off I went. So I've been here for nine years, so now I have a roof over my head, thankfully. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you know, in the country music business, getting to know a lot of uh, the right people is uh, is a very good thing. It looks like you have done that. You and I have a lot of mutual friends there. Yeah, yeah I've, I've been blessed. I've met some fabulous people like Tim and Roxanne Atwood and They've been super kind to me, and um, Tim's done some things for me, and I actually got to do a little bit of music with him last week at the National Palace, and that was fun. And, and uh, you know, Bobby Randall, of course, and and, um, and then work in the Orange Blossom Opry in Florida really uh, opened some doors for me to meet some wonderful people that, you know, I wouldn't have had the chance if I hadn't gone and done that. So, yes, yeah, it's been, been a bit of a whirlwind. Well, that's fabulous. Uh, we've got a really nice uh, Michigan <clears throat> connect. Excuse me, Michigan connection down there in uh, Florida. We've got uh, Bobby Randall's down there, and I think Arlen Willett uh, plays uh, piano down oh, there yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I've I've met Arlen I think twice now, so I don't know him well, but I know you know I know of him. Yes. Yeah, super nice guy. I've known both of those yeah. guys for many many years. It's amazing. That's great. Well, you, uh, uh, your husband, who uh, passed away here recently, and I'm so sorry about that. Uh, was such a Thank such you. an awesome entertainer, and uh, you guys did some great duets together too. Tell me a little bit about uh, working with him. Um, well, we we started. The funny thing about it is that I we we both knew about each other back in um, we met in 2013, and um, we were using mutual band members if they weren't working for me they were working for him and vice versa and i always told them they were cheating on me if they were working for him <laughs> and um 
And uh, but we didn't meet. Uh, we were doing that for probably about the whole year of 2012, and knew of each other, but never met until about April of, of 2013, and um, and started working together off and on. You know, if if the um, schedules would mesh, and then uh, we fast forward to the end of the year. We got married in 2013, and. Um, and uh, put together, start work building a, a duet show so that, you know, since both of us were front people, you know, neither front, front people don't necessarily always want to be harmony singers. So we were like, okay, we have to be respectful of each other, both being solo people, and put together songs that we can do together or songs that Jack's doing or I'm doing and we're doing, you know, stuff like that. So that's what we did um, for uh, when we, you know, in 2012, I'm sorry, 2013, 2014, and I was still working a day job, and um, in 2015, I got laid off from that job unexpectedly, and, well, I guess normally layoffs are unexpectedly, (laughs) (laughs) no, (laughs) but, uh, um, so we started really trying to figure out how to get the music career as our livelihood, and and, uh, Jack said that, you know, if I worked the phone and the emails like I did at my day job, because my my trade, my, um, I've been a secretary by trade for about 20 years of my career mm-hmm. and, um, or administrative assistant, if you would prefer. And, um, so then, so that's what I did. And, and actually what we started out doing was senior living locations. And we actually literally to get our chops up and really know what the other one was going to do in any particular song and moment and what he was going to play on the guitar. I was going to do on that note. We actually literally did our very first um, tour was all senior living locations across the country. Oh, wow. That's great. And, and, and they're a very forgiving crowd. So it was a great way to bring two lead singers together and make sure our show was tight, make sure it was entertaining, you know, make sure that we knew what the right hand was going to do any given moment. And that's what happened. And, um, and then in 2017, we started breaking out into theaters and casinos and, and resorts and things like that. But we still did the senior living stuff. Um, I, I still even do some of that to fill in my to fill in my schedule. You know, and like he always said, you know, what's the point of sitting? We had, we had blessed to have gotten an RV so that we didn't have to stay in hotels. And he said, what's the point of sitting on the couch in the RV if we can go make 150 bucks? You know, so that was a good mentality because it wasn't like we had to have five thousand dollars to leave the couch. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of how we did it, and then you know, then the bigger and better paying jobs started coming in and trickling in, and then we got uh, a really good tour going down in Texas, and that came to a screeching halt when he passed away. But that's okay; we still had a good run. Absolutely, and you guys uh, recorded some great music together. Uh, the website, folks, is lawlessandmay.com, and uh, you've got uh, a wonderful duet album, Classic Country Duets, and also a gospel CD and a Christmas CD there, too, that are available. Yes. Yes, sir. And then we also have, along with our music, um, you can jam while you eat our jam. Uh, you can buy, I, I sell... Um, uh, jam that the Amish make, so it's all wholesome ingredients, and uh, I take it all across the whole country, and man, does that sell like hotcakes. We've got six, I think six different flavors, like blackberry and seedless black raspberry, and again, all wholesome ingredients, so there's no, you know, if it's no sugar, it's literally no sugar, no artificial sweetener either. So between the CDs and the jam, yeah, we can have a good old time. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt about that. I, uh, we we get uh, from the Amish a, a, a popcorn seasoning that is fabulous. I've sworn by it for oh, years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I used to live in Indiana, and there was a huge uh, Amish Amish population down there. And uh, man, they had some of the best food. Yeah, wow. They they always make everything just it's it's always so healthy seeming, you know, because they're not they're not. Uh, using all the processed stuff to keep it preserved and stuff like that. So I like that very much. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. And uh, you've been working with uh, Anita Stapleton and Diane Barry, too, two more of my favorites. Yeah, I have. I've been I've been blessed to hang out with those girls. Jack actually introduced me to Diane um, several years ago, and um, Jack had done some stuff with Diane when uh, when she used to own, own Rudy's down there by the Texas Troubadour. She and her husband owned Rudy's. And Jack would sometimes go in there and play bass. And so that's how he got to know uh, uh, Diane and Russell. And then um, 
and then of course he introduced me to her and then after he passed away we started kind of hanging out together because she lost her husband two months before I did and um so then, you know, she started. We started kind of working together, doing a few things, and she's gotten real busy. So I don't get always get to be able to do music with her um, as of recently because she's just really busy too, which is super. Um, but when I get a chance to work with her and Anita both, boy, I just I feel like man, I just feel like I need to work work on my guitar playing harder. And <laughs> it's a good thing though when you hang out with people that are better than you, it makes you become better, and I believe that. Well, absolutely, and they're they're a lot of fun to be with too. They're great people. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So I know, obviously, with everything going on in the world right now, the uh, the gigs are kind of slow. But uh, what's what's coming up for you in the future? Are you planning on doing some more recording? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, I plan to be. I think it's probably going to be in the next couple of months. I would say putting a plan in place right now to record a new gospel album. And um, so I'm hoping, I think I'm going to be collaborating. Um, I have a record label here in, in Nashville. I have my own record label, but there's a record label over in Hawaii that wants to jump in and collaborate um, as a tag team. So I think that's probably what's going to happen with that gospel album. So that'll be nice. Um, he can release it over there. I can release it over here or whatever, you know, however we're going to do it. So I'm excited about that. It's, just, it's in the planning stages right now, choosing the songs that we're going to do. And and um, I actually have a gospel song that I've written that Tim Atwood's helping me with. Um, and as I'm, I'm hoping that will get on the album because it'll be my first. It'll be actually be my first song that gets caught. So oh, I'm excited great. about that. That's great. Tim Atwood is just fabulous. I, he's been on my uh, show many times and he's so awesomely talented and uh and roxanne i mean they're just great people i love being with them i do too yeah it's a, another one of those again where where you hang out with people that are stronger and better at certain things and it just drags you up which is good instead of the other way <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> so i appreciate that i appreciate that well we're looking forward to uh, hearing that music from you when it's done and of course uh let keep us posted on your book too uh, i think that will be an interesting yeah. uh story and uh, we'd love to have you back on the show and we can uh, do a feature on that all that stuff too that'd be super scott thank you all right well we're going to play uh we're going to play some of your great duets with uh, jack lawless and uh, i want to play nobody said too that's that's a beautiful song tell me a little bit about that song that was the first original song that I heard when I moved to Nashville. I was working with a um, a band before Jack and I met, and um, there was a young girl that came to one of the shows. She was a friend of the rhythm guitar player in my band, and he said, you ought to listen to that song that she wrote. It was, I think it was, may have been her first song that she cut, or that she did not cut, but she wrote here. And uh, I believe she came from Wisconsin, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong. But anyway... Um, so I listened to it. She actually had given me two or three songs, and that was the one that really caught me. Um, so I figured, well, I think I want to do that one, and she was so excited. And then um, a friend of a friend um, was listening to the song, and he, super creative um, videographer, and he said, I got to do a video on that, a music video on that. Could Would you let me do it? And we literally, Scott, we literally used an old mic stand his old 35 millimeter camera and everything was organic it wasn't you know hyped up and we weren't in bucket bucket trucks and we weren't you know we weren't using fancy anything mm -hmm. and i think the video he was he was so creative that you know he could see it before he even did it this gentleman that did it so that's that's what makes it so cool because one of the scenes um, you see things spinning behind me or I'm kind of in the middle of the spin. And he literally took his camera and was running around in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It was pretty wild. Yeah, everything was, was just we used what we had. And that was, I, I think it's remarkable for, you know, a story. it's a remarkable story for what we had. We, I think it came out really, really well. And I was super happy about that. I don't know where he is or if he's even still alive, but he had um, problems with addiction, which was a shame. Um, but I'm glad that I got to uh, get the video and meet him, at least. I just don't know where he is anymore. Well, that's fantastic. Well, we're going to play that song. It's a beautiful song. And, uh, folks, again, Rebecca May Lawless's website is lawlessandmay.com. 
And uh, please check that out. Check out her music and uh, keep tabs on what's going on with her on Facebook as well. And, uh, Rebecca, I want to thank you so much for taking time to be on My Kind of Country. Well, I appreciate your time, too, and thank you for the invite, and I hope to speak to you very soon. Thank Uh, you. I'll look forward to it. Thank you so much. Here's some beautiful music from Lawless and May as we continue with My Kind of Country. Have you got a heart? Have you got a soul? What about your life? Is it out of control? Are you alone and aching? You don't know what to do. Well, I've got a friend, and he loves you. Got a heart? Do I see a tear? What about your mind? Is it full of fear? Are you needing someone to put your Trust into Well I've got a friend And he loves you He will take your heart He will cleanse your soul Just Let him take control And you will be free Your soul will be at rest A life that's full of joy Yes, you will be blessed He'll heal the ache inside you You'll never be alone Now you've got a friend And he loves you His name. 
name is Jesus. Some people start off with a big romance, a black tie wedding and a fancy dance. It's off to an island in the deep blue sea They get back home thinking that's how love should be But we got married in a country chapel Drove away in a beat up car Bought a little house in our hometown And settled down where we are Our love is an everyday thing Taking each day as it comes Making it grow like a sweet red rose Be held in your 
Father, please, I can't make it on my own. Help me stand, Father, please, lift me up and take me home. Lift me up and take.